The first jobs report of the year is this Friday. We want to take a look at workplace trends, which sectors are hiring, and the outlook for layoffs in 2024. Joining us for that is Joanne Lippman. She is a Yale University lecturer. She's also a CNBC contributor. Good morning, Joanne. Good morning, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We were just saying that. Um, Let's talk a little bit about what to expect in 2024, because if I look back at 2023, I would definitely say this was still a year that it was definitely the employee's market, right? Not an employer's market, but an employee's one. Does that continue in 2024? Yeah, so 2023 is such an interesting year because it continued to be an employee's market, even though economists were predicting a recession, right? Things were supposed to go south. They didn't. The market remained really, really strong. But at the same time, companies started demanding that people show up, that you get that return to office mandates were growing by leaps and bounds by all the major companies we know, Disney and Meta and Amazon and on and on and on. And yet what happened was... Employees didn't, for the most part, play ball, right? I mean, yeah, okay, tell me to come back. Good luck with that. <laughs> well, well, they came back somewhat, but you know, if you look at Nick Bloom, who is the Stanford economist who follows all of this, and I was talking with him, and he said, you know, it was 40% of people at the beginning of last year, 40% of people still worked at home at least one day wow. or more a week. And that number has not changed. So even though we hear about a lot of companies demanding but in seats, uh, well, it's not happening. May, I mean, look, maybe they're demanding that you're there one, two, three days a week, but you still have 40% who get at least one day a week. At, at least home. one day a week. So here's maybe the... Maybe you're back more, just not 100%. So what I think is interesting is two-thirds of CEOs in a, in, a, in a pretty massive global study said that by 2026, they expect we're back to five days a week. And I, that just seems impossible. Just seems like wishful thinking. Um, on that part, it does seem like the five-day work week as a standard is over. We're almost four years past the beginning, which is crazy, right? Almost right. four years past the beginning of the pandemic. And I, we've got to accept there's a new normal. Well, my question, my thought process was always that it would remain that way until there was a big recession and massive layoffs, at which point the employers can, can do whatever they want. I mean, I, I still feel like it's an employee's job market to a certain extent. But if you have a deep recession and massive layoffs, I don't think you're going to have too many people who are going to say, no, I'm not coming in five days a week. I 100% agree with that. And, and the reason we've been in this position is because we haven't had that recession that was predicted. And so employees have had the upper hand. You know, maybe things will shake out a little bit differently this year. I think the other big trend that I want to really take a careful look at is what happens when you do have what we are going toward now, which looks hybrid, right? What happens to the people who spend more time remote? versus those who are on the premises. And are and it's been too soon to tell, but I think we're going to start to see the fallout in terms of, is there a wage differential for doing the same job? Mm -hmm. Is there a differential for certain groups of people who are more likely to want to work remotely? Um, I'd written, we spoke about women, uh, particularly working moms, who are more likely to want to have those remote or hybrid opportunities. Is it going to end up hurting them because they are not on the premises as frequently. And we know there's that proximity bias where we like and promote and give opportunities to those who we see. So I think those are big questions. We don't have the answers yet, but those are big questions I'm certainly looking for. for yeah, this year. I, I mean, oh, go ahead, Robert. Do we have any clarity on what it's done to productivity? I know it's too early. And then the question longer term is, you know, those cultural impacts of not being in the office. You know, all of us grew up in Dow Jones where we learned our trade by sitting next to reporters and editors. How long will it take before the negative impacts of that show up? Yeah, so you're hitting on two really important issues. And, you know, one of them is just in terms of the, of the learning curve. And, and I do really feel like you need to be with people some of the time, I don't know that you need five days a week, but you certainly need to be, when we all started as reporters at the Wall Street Journal, and we learned our jobs by listening to the more experienced people around us. There's like no way you can do that job just like walking in off a college campus. You can't do that job. So you actually, and that's true for every industry, right? So you need some of that in-person mentoring and understanding and culture um, at the same time. Um, but, you know, you also have the issue 
of this sort of two-tier kind of situation. And, and I think we'll start to see the effects of that. The productivity piece, by the way, there's been a lot of research on productivity, and it does come out in different spots. For most of what I've seen, though, and particularly research that's been done on the four-day work week has been uniformly that your productivity actually remains the same and that your people are happier and that you're like more likely to retain them. So there is something to be said there.